A GraphQL server may return interface or union types, which is an abstract GraphQL type that allows the GraphQL server to return various different subtypes in one resolver. So in our GraphQL client application, I want to hit a query that returns a union or interface type and demonstrate how we can use fragments to get data about each of the subtypes. So here in our client application with Strawberry Shake, we're looking at our schema.graphql. This represents the GraphQL schema for our GraphQL API. And here on this query type, we have this search query, and this returns an array of search results. So a search result, you guessed it, it's gonna be a union or interface type. In this case, it is a union type. So our array of search results that we get back from that query, each item in that array could be either a course type or an instructor type. So what I wanna do is I wanna execute this search query and get back data for each of these subtypes. So either a course type or an instructor type. And to do that, we are gonna use GraphQL fragments. But first off, let's go ahead and create a GraphQL document that's gonna represent our search query. So this is gonna go in our queries folder. Let's add a new item here. We're gonna call this search query.graphql and just get rid of all this. And I've actually had someone recently ask how we can get IntelliSense for these .graphql files. I haven't found a way in Visual Studio. I assume there's probably an extension in VS Code because I feel like the extension support is a bit better in VS Code. But what I've been doing for now is just using Banana Cake Pop. And we can just use this to scaffold out our GraphQL operations and then just paste them into this GraphQL file. And the nice thing about Banana Cake Pop is that we have some IntelliSense here. So we're pointing at our GraphQL server that I actually have running in the background. So if I do a control space, I see we have this search query. That's what I want to execute. And then the first thing we see in IntelliSense is this type name. So the type name is a string representation of the type that we get back. In our case, it's either going to be a course type or instructor type. But other than that, IntelliSense doesn't really show us anything else. And this is where we have to use inline fragments. So we can have an inline fragment here. So that's three dots and then one, the type that we're looking for. So that's either a course type or instructor type. So for the search results that are course types, we want to get back the course's ID, name, and I'll grab subject as well. And then another inline fragment. So if the search result is an instructor type, I wanna grab the ID and we'll grab first name and last name as well. And then last but not least, this search query takes in a parameter for the search terms. Let's specify that. For this, I'll just do A and let's see what we get back. So let's run this. And here we go, I get a course and I know that because the type name is course type. And of course we have name and subject as well. And we got this back because there's an A right here in GraphQL 101. And then I also got this instructor type back. And I got this back because there's an A in the last name of Sean. So if this were empty, we'd actually get everything back as we see there. But in our GraphQL client application, I actually want this search term to be a variable. So let's do that. I want this to be some kind of term variable. And then we're going to have to define that variable up here. So we're going to have to give our query a name. We'll call this the search query and then add our term variable, which is just a string. And we'll make this variable required to with an exclamation point. And then in banana cake pot, we can come down to variables, this section down here and specify term. And we'll just throw a in here again and run this. And there we go. We pass in the term variable. So our query looks good. Let's go ahead and copy all this and move it into our GraphQL document in our client application. So let's paste that in there and then let's build and let Strawberry Shake generate the code to execute this query. So let's do that. And doesn't look like our generated code updated. And in previous videos, I've talked about this issue and I've solved it by moving the GraphQL file to the root of the project. But I actually had someone comment that we can select this GraphQL file and come to properties and change the build action to GraphQL compiler. And then we can try this again. And yay, this time the strawberry shake generated code did update. So thanks a ton to whoever called that out. That helps a lot. So now we have our search query generated. Now what I'm going to do is create a script to execute that search query. So add a new class in our scripts folder. I'll call this the search script. And then we're going to get our GraphQL demo client as a field in here. So let's get that injected through the constructor. And then the script is just going to be able to be ran. So I'm going to have a single method on here 
to run the script. And all we're going to do is take our GraphQL demo client, take our search query. Oh, I don't like how I named my search query actually search query because now the types are I search query query. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Let's just get rid of query and let's build again. I'm going to have to comment this out. Let's do that and rebuild and let's bring this back. It should just be search now. That's what I want. And now the type is just an I search query that's better, but we can take that and we can execute it and we'll just pass in an empty search term for now. Just get everything back. So wait that let's get the search result. And now I just want to debug this for now. So I'll just do a console right line here and put a breakpoint on this line and we'll look through our search result. But first we got to run this script. So let's go to our startup, which is our program.cs and we're going to have to register our search script. So let's add that. And then I'm going to use this search script in my startup class down here. This is what gets run in the beginning of our app. So in fact, I'm going to get rid of all this other stuff because we're not going to have to log in for this. So we're just going to get a search script injected through the constructor. And then we're just going to run that script. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. So I hit my breakpoint. Let's look at our search result. And going to the data, we got our search results back, five items. And we have a mix of courses and instructors. There we go. So now that we got our courses and instructors back, let's split them up and print them. So let's dig into this search result and dig into the data. I'm not going to be doing any error handling here, which I feel like I mentioned in every tutorial for this series. But right now, I just want to focus on digging into this generic search result type and getting data from the subtypes, either course or instructor. And first, I want to extract all of the courses and print those. So for that, we're going to take our search data and extract the courses via type checking. So we can just do an of type in this case. And the type we're looking for is an I search underscore search underscore course type. That's how strawberry shake generated it. So these are our courses and then let's get the instructors too. So I'll just copy this line and change this to extract our instructor type and we'll call this instructors. And then let's print each of our courses. So let's just iterate over all these and we'll just write out the course name and similar thing for instructors. Let's do a 4 H on this. So loop through those instructors that we just extracted out. And for the instructors, we'll print the instructor first name and the instructor last name. And then let's separate courses and instructors a little bit. So let me add a header for courses and a header for instructors and just add a space as well. So it should be good here. We extracted the courses and the instructors separated those and we're going to print those separately. So let's see how this looks. And here we go. We got our courses and we got our instructors. So the last thing we'll do is get the search term from the user. So let's do a right line and enter a search term and then let's get that term. So just a console read line and we'll pass that into the query. So let's try this out. Should be fun. We'll do A. And here we go. We get courses and instructors filtered by our search term. So just to summarize what we did here, we have a GraphQL query that returns, in this case, an array of unions. And that union represents either a course type or instructor type. So we want to get back data for each of these specific subtypes. So in our GraphQL query document, we used inline fragments so that when the search result is a course, we get the ID name and subject back. And when it's an instructor, we get the ID first name and last name back. And then strawberry shake generated code so that we could execute this query, which we do in our search script. So execute, pass in a search term, and then we extract the courses and instructors through type checking and print them separately. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own GraphQL client application in order to consume GraphQL APIs that return interfaces or unions. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.